Welcome to the Holistic Oncology Strategy Review Series. To kick off this series, we have to start with the real reason for getting cancer. If you know this real reason, it's going to help guide you through your different decision making on how to, how to focus on the healing part of oncology. So let's start, start off immediately with regards to the real reason. Now, some doctors would tell you it's because your forefathers, your siblings had cancer. That's why you have it. Now, that's one of two things, either a lazy doctor's answer or an uneducated doctor's answer. It's not a gene that carries with you, even breast cancer. Do you know that in breast cancer, for example, that her two, that they say it's a gene, it's only in 0.025% of the people. So it's not the reason. We need to get down to the real reason why cancer is in your body. Now, why do we need to do that? Is you need to know whether you are addressing the reasons for cancer so that you can do more for yourself. So let's get started. There's two things. There's a reason for getting cancer and a reason for being diagnosed with cancer. And there's a distinct difference. Let me explain that. The reason for getting cancer means how is it created. At a stage, the cell is healthy and then it turns into cancer. That is the getting cancer. The diagnosed with cancer means there was sufficient growth to be able to have the cancer be seen, identified, whether it was with, with symptoms, whether it was a physical feeling, anything that contributed to say, but we need to do more investigation. It means there was growth. So diagnose means one cell grew to more and now it's a colony. If it's one cell, it's impossible for a doctor to be able to identify that as cancer. Impossible. So it has to be growth that determines whether you can be diagnosed. So let's first start up with the diagnose. Like I mentioned, there was one cell that turned over to cancer. Then it grew to a second cell. It duplicated. Those two cells duplicated to four. It'll go four, eight, sixteen. 32, etc. But now, when it was one cell, two cell, four cells, they were not intelligent enough to, to, to protect themselves against the immune system. And that's where the immune system was supposed to deal with them. So the reason for it to grow means the immune system failed. Its number one job is to keep you safe. It did not do it. Now, there's many contributing factors that deal with this. And part of this series, we're going to get into the different contributing factors, but we're going to do it, do it where you're going to ask me different questions, and I'm going to go in slight more depth on what, you, what you'd like to know more about that. So let's get back to the reason for getting cancer. Our focus today is going to be the reason for getting cancer. It has got to do with the mitochondria. For those who do not know what the mitochondria is, I'll get to explain it in a moment. But first, if we take a healthy mitochondria and we surgically implant it into a cancer cell, instantaneously that cancer cell stops acting like cancer. Isn't that fascinating? So if you can only have these... Um, machines taking healthy mitochondria and planting it in all these cells, it means there's not, not going to be any cancer cells. That's how simple it, it could be if technology allowed it. But now, if we take an unhealthy cell, which meaning by we take in a cancer mitochondria and we go place it into a healthy cell, immediately that healthy cell turns into cancer, starts acting like cancer, which means this is the smoking gun for getting cancer. 
Now there's many people say it's got to do with stress and sugar and fill in the blank. No. All those are contributing to what we're getting here. It's all going about the mitochondria. What's contributing to the mitochondria? Now the mitochondria is a, a small organism in every single cell. So you've got all these cells, whether it is your lymph nodes, whether it is your your nervous system, every tissue, every bone, every cell, everything has got mitochondria in it. So you see what a mitochondria does. Now very much the same as what we get power stations where they burn coal for and electricity, your mitochondria does exactly the same. That's why they call it a, a power station or powerhouse of the cells. It takes the nutrition plus oxygen and it then digests it. So it's just a digestion system which then changes that into energy. They call it APT, not important, it's energy. Okay? To give you energy, the less coal you've got, the less energy you have. The more coal you have, the more energy. The, and as it burns it, these fumes that come out is carbon dioxide, which we breathe out. So now you know why is it carbon dioxide that you're breathing out. It's just burning away all the nutrition with oxygen. Give me your carbon dioxide. Other side is energy. So we need to talk more about energy. So just like that power station giving us the, the 110 or 220 volt, it's like a battery. So it's just not on that same, same level, it's just smaller battery. Our body works with battery. Now to prove this, when the doctor does the ECG on you, what they're doing? They're listening to the heart, but how is it determined? It's determined in millivolt. You see, that's, that's just a form of energy, millivolt. Now, that millivolt could be measuring on a battery as well. So you can literally just measure this battery being 1,500 millivolt. You'll see there, 1,466 millivolt. Now, we can go further we can say our body could be measured as well. There we can see the body also measures on certain millivolt. So let's go in a little bit deeper. Now, if you take a watch battery, very small battery, that's a one volt battery. And how much does our cells measure in volt? It measures at 0 0.07 volt. That's how small this, this, this battery is inside a cell. So we know, we know that a healthy cell measures between, that 0 0.7 means it's 70 millivolt, between 70 and 90 millivolt. That's when it is healthy. So we can start identifying whether we're healthy or not based on the volt that the cell releases. So you can see me measuring there, and you see I go up right up to sometimes 113 millivolt. Why are you seeing that so much higher than the previous lady I showed? She's a drinker and she's a smoker, which contributes towards the reduction of the energy. So if you are doing certain things that influence your energy basis, you are going to change, change the outcome of those energy or those cells. Now what's important on this series on the holistic oncology, we need to determine what is the volt, what is the cancer measure, what's that voltage, that energy measure in cancer. Now whether it's colon cancer, whether it's lung cancer, breast cancer, no matter what cancer, if we go measure it, we can go see how much does a cancer cell measure at. Now shocking, it measures at 20 millivolt compared to the healthy 70 to 90 millivolt. There you can see the higher the volt, the less cancer. The lower, we're going to get to cancer. Hence the fact that we need to make sure that our mitochondria 
has got the ability to be successful, to take away all these contributing factors which contribute that the mitochondria starts failing. So we have to go find all those contributing factors. And this is part of what this whole series is going to be, to identify all these things that contribute towards the cancer. Because we know the mitochondria failed. We know what contributed for it to be diagnosed, meaning by the growth, was the immune system, and the immune system failed. These things we need to get addressed. So what I'd like to ask of you is, in the comments, write your different comments and give me your opinions of what you th what you think about this mitochondria. Tell me whether the, your oncologist told you we need to look after the mitochondria, we need to look after the uh, the immune system, or is a doctor just destroying your immune system with your therapies? Tell us what's busy going on and we can go through a few of these comments as well as then you have got the ability to be able to ask for a review. Click on the link in the description. We would be able to go through those. The, I'll uh, draw the descriptions, sorry, the um, questions, the review that you want. If you say, let's say, for example, you've got, uh, well, I've got, for example, there's just one. Colin has already sent me one in as example. Colin from Washington, he would like to know whether oxygen is important to fight cancer. Okay, so if you'd like to immediately jump on over to the first review that I'm doing for Colin from Washington, right on the on the side, just click on it and we can take you direct in there. But you can also ask for different reviews, whatever's on your mind, and I'll see how quick I can get to cover it. Thank you for joining us.